Uh, oh, thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for all the speakers. Uh, I think these were very interesting and very relevant presentations uh, for you to, to know, I mean, to get some perspectives up about the what to do after the matter. So, um, I'm a, a molecular epidemiologist and I joined the University of Antwerp in somewhere in 2011 uh, to start my PhD. And I will tell you a little bit my, about my journey uh, to become a molecular epidemiologist and the things I've been doing um, in, in my country. So, uh, and also the message of this uh, presentation is that this, the, the masters are it's not only about uh, gain skills and knowledge, but also you have to take advantage of the network, the network of the, of the university, the, ne the network of, of, your, of your professors, and also the expertise they have uh, uh, developing projects, like, like for example, the view projects, the, the ones that are going to talk about today. So a little bit about me, uh, already said, I'm a I already said I'm a molecular epidemiologist by training, also a population geneticist. Um, I'm currently I'm teaching at the Faculty of Medicine, uh, courses in molecular epidemiology, of course, but also courses with, uh, for example, uh, to bring skills in first year students of the Master of Epidemiology uh, related to epidemiological research methods. I'm also teaching uh, at the Free University of Brussels, also molecular epidemiology. And what my first, uh, my first uh, academic experience uh, in, in Belgium. Um, currently, I'm principal a research fellow uh, at the Faculty of Medicine, where I'm developing uh, different projects in molecular epidemiology with malaria, also from other labs. And I'm also a member of the EPICEL. The EPICEL is, the, let's say, it's a, it's a group of epidemiologists within the Faculty of Medicine, where we aim to provide some um, advice that, to the faculty related to epidemiological uh, methods, of course. Uh, I'm co-leading uh, together with Professor Van der uh, the recently uh, created Malaria Research Team, March, that which I'm going to talk about later. And I'm the academic coordinator of the ICP program, the scholarship. So I I, I knew about, uh, about you before you arrived in Boston, so you didn't know about this. I'm working with this program. Um, I also I have affiliate affiliation with the Berlin University, the Dana University. And I'm a coordinator of the GMAO, which is a, a network uh, related to uh, genetic approaches uh, for malaria elimination, which is most of the top of the About my education, well, I studied a long time ago biology in Peru. And later, um, I, 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 I came here to Belgium uh, thanks to a Vlier scholarship. So I'm also a, a Vlier scholar. Uh, but this was to study in Brussels uh, a master in molecular biology. Uh, while I was in Peru, in Miami, and also in Brussels, I was always working already in the malaria field. So I had experience working in the lab, of course, but also working in the field. And um, at that time, I was really into genetics of malaria parasite. Um, but I, I felt that there were some missing, missing skills and knowledge on me because I, I was a lot of working a lot of in the, in the lab and the computer, but I didn't know how to. Um, so to bring this knowledge into a public, uh, uh, a health public uh, uh, perspective. So that's how um, I, I, well, I met the Professor Van Trudium while, while I was with the master in Brussels, and I asked about the possibility to do a PhD. So it took me a year to find a position that was not easy. Um, it was maybe, maybe just the fact that the master in Brussels, I applied for a program in Germany. It was related to malaria, of course, and I said, that's that's the program, I have the, prof I have the profile, I will apply only to that program, so don't do that. If Once you finish your master or when you're doing your master, try to apply to different programs, not, not only to one. So that's, I failed to, 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 to get in this program, but anyway, I, I, I joined the, the units later, where the, the unit that jean was leading, and um, a year after I got a position at the university as a research assistant at the Faculty of Medicine. So I was able to do a PhD and also to have some um, to assist in teaching, for example, and also in some projects, uh, with some research projects. Uh, so it took me like seven years actually to finish my PhD because besides my PhD, I, uh, I started in 2017 the Master in Epidemiology. So because I, as I said, I was, uh, I missed some some uh, some background in epidemiology, so I said, okay, I will take it. 
maybe not the best idea to do the P master, the full master at the same time with the PhD. So that that's why it took me a, a while. Uh, but also it took me a while because I was while I got involved uh, in developing uh, projects, research projects and educational projects. So that's also why, as you will see, a little bit more time. Uh, so on the title is missing there, but this is the Global Health, which is, we are some members of the Global Health Institute here at the Faculty of Medicine. And we are focused on research, mainly uh, research of infectious diseases, but also chronic diseases. And we are also quite active in education. Uh, we are a multidisciplinary team with uh, epidemiologists, with statisticians, uh, social socialists, and, and, and so on. So, uh, but if you want to, to know more about that, I invite you to visit the website. And within the Global Health Institute, we have the Master the Malaria Research Team, um, where well, the senior faculty, senior faculty is uh, Professor Van Tingen, who is the clinical epidemiologist, Stephen Abrams, who is uh, one of the data scientists, and um, the molecular epidemiologist. And uh, nowadays we are growing in, in, in terms of PhD students who are fully based here in Antwerp, because uh, since the beginning of the, the of, of our team, which actually I said at the beginning we have recently created, but it's not true. We have we have recently put the name, but actually we exist since 2010 or 11 even earlier. And most of the PhDs were uh, based in the countries, uh, mainly in Africa at that time, and now we are uh, spreading in South America as well. Um, and yeah, so this is just a few of our, of our PhD students that are here in Mali, Super Focus in the bathroom, and you're free, Mandela. So we are uh, within this malaria uh, team, we are working on different uh, topics. Uh, like uh, implementation research, in prevention, um, in elimination, also in assessing elimination appro uh, approaches. And of course, as I said, uh, I'm mainly busy with molecular epidemiology. And as you will see, I'm going to tell you something about uh, our work in Peru. So I started saying uh, you have to take advantage of uh, the network, but also about the possibilities uh, that Belgium gives you somehow, uh, because uh, you know VLIR is not only uh, providing scholarships, but you also have the possibility to develop projects, in projects in, 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 even in, in your own country. Um, even if you are Belgian, you can also work in, in I mean, with real projects in, in other, in other uh, countries. So, and that's how in 2016, I, um, Follow uh, Professor Van Trouwer's experience. He had already a lot of uh, projects in, in in Africa. So I said, okay, maybe it's time also we I can start my own projects in in Peru. So I started with a, a small project, a million project, uh, five years. Uh, so it's this one, and the idea was to bring uh, skills uh, on molecular epidemiology and also classic epidemiology uh, to um, friends. Uh, for the, the knowledge on molecular epidemiology, but focusing on malaria research. So we started to work with two institutions in Peru, in the Amazon, which, which is an endemic area, and, and one in the capital, where I, I used to, to study, or to develop, or where I did my thesis. Uh, so that's how, we, how it started, and then we applied for, for another uh, large fund. This was for a five-year project. Uh, so we were building up on the previous experience. Uh, again, was bringing like we brought uh, some courses uh, with UI staff uh, to Peru, um, and then um, we started to collaborate not only with academic universities, with academic institutions, but also with institutions, for, for example, from the Ministry of Health. So we started to get to have an impact. We started to to, to provide that uh, evidence, but this evidence was started being used also by the policy makers and so on to develop the, the, the policies uh, for malaria elimination. So I also I also got some, uh, I got funding also from Bolivia. This was not only for malaria, but I started to spread a little bit. So I made use of my network at the university. So I, I uh, conducted Professor Annalise Van Rijn, you know what is her, so she's TV, TV specialist. So she also wanted to, to start to do some work in Peru. So 
I brought, I, I started, I started a collaboration with her and we had this project which was to provide um, skills on bioinformatics and genome sequencing for, you know, for surveillance of the different <laughs> So we started to work in malaria, in tuberculosis, and we were supposed to work in antimicrobial resistance, but because of the pandemic, we had to switch to COVID, of course. So we had to work in COVID, COVID as well. Uh, so then we started to get uh, also uh, small projects like, well, this was uh, to expand our, our network in Peru. So now at the time we were working with three, three universities and the Ministry of Health for this four project, we started to work with another university in a different region, which was also affected by malaria. So we started to, to spread in Peru. And then we started to get also local funding. So now our partners were uh, recognized in Peru, so they already got some some uh, level. Let's say they improved their research level or capacity. So they were starting to get also local uh, funding. So was this was funding from the Ministry of Education in Peru, um, and then we started to okay, see so we continue working with real projects. When well, then we went for FAWO funding, which provides uh, funding for for basic research, for example. So that's so we were really uh, uh, not only doing uh, capacity building and, and, and research, uh, but FOA is really only is only for research, uh, I would say. And now we are here. Uh, last year we uh, recently got um, a new new project, and this time I am the PI. I mean, I'm the promoter uh, of this project. Uh, and this was a five-year program, and we are working. Uh, I will show this later. We're working together again with, with like three or five uh, uh, academic institutions in Peru and also the local and the local authorities. So as you see, I uh, while I was uh, doing my PhD, also while I was doing my, my master, I was already uh, I already started to uh, to think uh, on projects in Peru. Of course, you you understand why Peru, uh, and I think this is something you can also uh, somehow explore. Uh, and, and I think, as I said, you, you have to take advantage. You have to also benefit for, from from what is seen here for for alumni and alien for the students. So I I want to tell you about this, this very last project we, where we are trying to strengthen uh, the efforts between Malaria in Peru, and this is like a, like the like a timeline or like a historical uh, description of malaria in Peru. Uh, this at the year the number of cases of the Y axis. And in the 90s, we had like epidemics of malaria because of uh, the introduction and, and dispersion of drug resistant parasites, but also because of the introduction of a vector which had a better fitness to, to, to transmit the disease. Uh, so, because of, the, of this um, drug resistance, the government decided to change the, the policies, the treatment policies. And it had some effect. It decreased actually the, the number of cases. And, and then there were in 2008 started uh, like a multi-country uh, program where they were using different approaches uh, uh, to control malaria at that time. And it involved a lot of uh, community workers improving the, the diagnostics uh, for microscopy, going to really remote areas. Um, so it was a big campaigns. Uh, and, Having like treatments available and things like that. So it was very, very nice. As you can see here, the crisp, but the program stopped and there was no further funding, and the government didn't want to or, or couldn't uh, continue uh, the efforts and then malaria emerged in Peru. So in somewhere in 2017, uh, finally we, we got from the government an approval for. Uh, there was a plan to eliminate malaria in the largest region in Peru where we had malaria. And, and they, in this program, they copied more or less uh, the same strategy of this program and they were able to decrease uh, malaria. So that's why now in Peru, we are in the phase of elimination. And last year was uh, developed a program uh, to eliminate malaria in Peru in, in 25 years, approximately. So there are different phases. Uh, we are not now here, but as you may understand, uh, it's not because now we have less malaria, it's going to be easier. Actually, if we try to use the same approaches, 
uh, we, we will not reach elimination. So we have to adapt the approach we are using. Um, just to give you some, a few examples about that. And um, for example, which are the real challenges of elimination in Peru is that now malaria is, um, is, uh, is mainly found in remote and indigenous areas. So this means remote that means that it's very difficult to reach those places and with with the, the, the funding of the Ministry of Health, maybe it's not enough to go there and to, to have like constant uh, interventions in these areas. And now, and second, we're facing uh, indigenous populations. So in Peru, uh, most of the people speak Spanish, but in these communities, they have their own uh, languages. So, and, what, and, and the culture is different. So going there requires some knowledge about how to approach this community. How are you going to, 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 to try to, how to prevent malaria? If they have malaria, how to, how to, how to go, for example, to the, to the health facilities and so on. So it's, it's, it's becomes quite challenging. Also, the fact that now we have most of the infections are submicroscopic. In, in malaria diagnosis is done using a microscope. microscope. So the microscope doesn't work. I mean, if it's not uh, um, uh, sensible enough to detect the, 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 the infections, then you cannot treat. And also, we have asymptomatic infections. So that means people, they have the parasites, but yeah, they don't. They also they don't want to. to Help us. So they become like a silent reservoir for malaria transmission. So again, we need this some, 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 somewhere else where we need to adapt our strategies, our interventions. And third, we have in Peru, we have no information about the efficacy of the, of the current anti malaria treatments that are given. So the WHO and my uh, like surveillance of, of the efficacy every five years. At least these areas, and yeah, I think like 15 years ago was the, the, the last. And now, if you start thinking about that, it's going to be difficult because you have like remote areas where it's and you have and you have techniques that are not uh, any to assess efficacy. So this is where we are. At this point, we are trying to improve this this. Uh, uh, we're trying to tackle these challenges. So this FLIR project is, uh, as I said, is, uh, is a project which involves uh, multiple universities. So, uh, so in Peru, it's, it's a very beautiful country. You have to visit uh, sometime. Uh, so this is Peru. We have the coast, the highlands, and uh, the Amazon. Of course, uh, most of the malaria cases are in the Amazon. And we are working there already since 2016 here in, with the University in the Amazon and with Cayetano University in the coast. And since a uh, couple of years, we're working with the other that is in with the university in the in Amazonas region, which is the second um, the second region in Peru with, with most of the malaria cases. So I think between uh, well, the Loreto region, the Loreto region and the Amazon region, we have already like 95% of the total burden. So that's very strategically uh, So we are not only working with the universities, but also we are working with the Ministry of Health, which leads, of course, the, the, the National Malaria Elimination Plan. And we are working with the local health authorities in these areas. So we are really, we have built a, a very nice uh, network. And the idea is that, of course, uh, the, the academic institution will, will generate the evidence, but this has to be absorbed by the local authorities. The knowledge has to be uh, uh, absorbed, and, and the idea is that they will adapt and or improve the, 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 the interventions that they are performing. Um, something else about multidiscipl multidisciplinarity. So um, this project, as you will see, involved some activities related to clinical epidemiology, molecular epidemiology, but also we are uh, uh, we are uh, working with uh, qualitative research uh, researchers because, as I said, we will we will work in indigenous communities, so we really need to get inf uh, information about uh, um, how the, the, the people in the communities uh, how do they behave towards malaria because they are about the disease. Um, and of course, uh, we have uh, the statisticians in the team. So this is 
This is uh, I put this from, from the education of uh, for really them to give you a, an example about what they commonly they ask for these projects. They always ask you to think about the to, to, what, what is the dream of what is the dream of this project? What, and the dream is translated like in the impact. So for, for us, it, it was like uh, to strengthen the Peruvian universities in multidisciplinary health related uh, research and outreach skills. So it was not only about research, but also about the outreach. Um, for these, uh, these universities are in, in and also it would have a, a positive impact in the populations affected by malaria in Peru. Um, then uh, Blir will ask you about objectives. One is related to, to of course, to develop capacities in this uh, in the Peruvian institution, and the other is, of course, to alleviate the malaria policy for and support malaria in Mexico. Uh, then you have like the intermediate intermediate changes, uh, and then they will ask you about the domains where the project comes. So we will focus in on helping people, uh, building uh, networks and strengthening partnerships and education programs and so on. So as, if you normally every time there is a call for blue projects, you will see they look very similar. So and they always look for for this kind of of of, uh, of preparation. And this is just uh, a brief. Uh, so we have like uh, the strengthening local um, um, high uh, education institutions in in these two regions, Loreto and Amazonas. Uh, and for that, we will uh, we will uh, pro provide like training, uh, long term training and mentoring uh, in multi multidisciplinary research, and we will help uh, to strengthen or to initiate actually the network between uh, universities um, in these two regions. Uh, in Peru, maybe similar to other countries, um, the universities, public universities, they don't talk to each other. Besides, they, they are situated in, in areas where they are um, where they have very similar uh, em environment and they are affected by similar infectious diseases or any diseases, and there is no interaction. So, uh, thanks to this project, we are starting uh, this collaboration between these universities and also the other university here in the, in the coast. And related to research, uh, so we will uh, uh, we will focus on. Um, evaluating some uh, approaches that can be used uh, towards malaria elimination. And we will focus, of course, in remote, vulnerable, uh, so indigenous malaria and indigenous populations. So, one of the aims is to improve diagnosis, and for that, uh, we, we will um, assess the implementation of a molecular uh, test that can be uh, used in, 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 in these remote areas. And this is uh, it's what is called NAP, and this is uh, a test that we have been working on already uh, from the previous project. So this is we are building up, building up in, in, from, the, from previous efforts. And, and for that, of course, we, to measure the, to assess the impact, we will uh, use as cellular uh, epidemiology. We will uh, look at how the transmission uh, became or not thanks to to this intervention. So the idea is to to implement this plan in the interventions that are currently. By the local health authorities, because they have like they, they go, for example, to these communities like like uh, every month and so on. But they go with the microscope. So the idea is that they go with this uh, molecular test and then they start to treat all the positive. Um, so this is, as I said, this is uh, and for this uh, like several epidemiology we will use some serological markers that are quite uh, specific for this. Uh, regions. So this is again. These are we. This this comes from a previous uh, research where we have identified which are the markers which, which provide which are more uh, antigenic to the to, to in this population. So again, we are really trying to uh, to to make it very very uh, specific. To, I mean, the research is, is quite specific to to this area. We will also assess the current uh, treatment schemes that are given in these areas, and for that we will. I uh, used uh, uh, the uh, from the Ministry of Health there to use uh, sending on sites in remote areas where it's not very easy to reach, and um, and then we will also work as I said we have we have a politically related component where we will um, assess the people's beliefs and perception towards uh, malaria burden and malaria care. Uh, 
And as I said, it's not only research, it's not only location, we have outreach. We will uh, provide, uh, because we are working already with, with the Mr. Tell, so that this evidence goes into the, we will communicate these findings to the public health authorities at the different levels. And also, uh, it is also the information, the, the research information. The idea is also to, kind of, to provide kind of, uh, how to say it, uh, to provide some um, information but in a tailored way to this, uh, to, to the to the population that is affected in these areas. So because it's very different to, for example, to communicate, I mean, how, how to prevent malaria, how to how to uh, attend the local um, health boards in urban areas, to rural areas, especially in indigenous areas. Um, yeah, so this is uh, in a nutshell about this, this program. So we aim to provide this the evidence, uh, and this evidence will be useful to adapt the the, the, the the national elimination of the strategies in Peru. And these are well, Susan, uh, maybe you, some of you know her. She's uh, maybe a uh, So she's a uh, researcher here at the University of as a PhD student, uh, but she's uh, based in Peru. So she she went back to, to her uh, homeland in Rio and now she's uh, strengthening the, the local university there. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's part of our team. And Mitchell, he's also uh, the roommate, he's also there. He didn't follow the MEPI, but the DBQ, which is the, the short version of the, of the MEPI that we also execute. You know. So, as I said, it's, I think, um, about the perspectives of being epidemiologists, this is it's good for doing research, but it would give you uh, an added value if you can bring this evidence with policies about. Um, so I will explain about this Spanish story, but this is the the, the the different phases for malaria elimination in Peru. So in 2019, uh, while we were organizing work, one a three week training in Peru about uh, developing skills in bioinformatics and, and, and uh, genome sequencing for, for malaria surveillance, uh, we decided to, uh, to create the genetic network for malaria elimination. Uh, so all the different stakeholders and different uh, research institutions in Peru who were uh, involved in surveillance, uh, local created uh, this network, GMAL, uh, and the idea was to do the different aims, but the idea of course was that all the research that we were, uh, or all the ideas that we were um, uh, bringing that the idea was that this evidence should go for, uh, beyond an article. This evidence should be translated somehow and explained in in, in language words to the uh, the, the authorities. Because in Peru, um, yeah, a lot of people working, in, for example, in the Ministry of Health, yeah, they, they don't if they see an article and if it's not, I mean, they, they will not really take care about. It. So you really have to to go there to to talk to them. And also the idea was to talk to the to, to this uh, ministry of health authorities because they were developing the, 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 um, the plans for malaria elimination. And we wanted to know exactly what what were they expecting for us. So it was really like uh, creating this channel of communication with them and, and, and that's how we created the, the network with different uh, institutions and also uh, some international institutions and the Ministry of Health Authority. Um, and yeah, and again, I highlight this uh, importance of networking. So this is, it was a little bit the, the, the story about um, working on malaria, people, but it's not only malaria, uh, where I'm involved and thanks to, to the networking. Um, for example, I'm also involved in, in, in other uh, in other initiatives. This is an initiative from, from the VUV uh, to train um, um, trainers and professionals in, in molecular uh, biology and technology in Kenya. Um, so I don't want to go much in detail. And this is another initiative uh, led, uh, led by the Institute of Tropical Medicine Network. Also, it's about molecular surveillance of the parasites. 
Um, so I want to finish with this slide. Uh, maybe I'll check this check for you uh, about uh, afterwards once you finish your master. Uh, some of you will, will, will go maybe to the private sector, or public sector, or or you want to do a PhD or so on. I think the, the best is try to check this. Try to to arrive in a, in a world where you can work in a, in a which is a healthy environment and where the the, the supervisors mot actually motivate you to work, where you have uh, freedom and, and actually where you can see you can grow. If if this if you don't find these characteristics, I mean. Yeah, maybe you you may get frustrated <laughs> afterwards, and make make use of your network, of course, and always uh, try to think beside. I mean, some some of you are already specializing in some some tracks, but don't only look at clinical epidemiology or only molecular epidemiology. So try to think big, uh, go for interdisciplinary research, uh, rely on your colleagues, and so always. Try to, if, it's possible, if possible, try to bring your research, I mean, the evidence in policy. So that, that may have an impact on the public health. So, yes, I think that's all. Uh, thank you for listening, and yeah, we can have a chat later.